Welcome to Fitzy's Fabulous Scrapbooks. I'm Michelle Fitzgerald, aka Fitzy, and I'm an independent advisor with Creative Memory Scrapbooking, and I'm here to help you make your scrapbooks fabulous. I'm very excited about what I'm going to show you today. I'm going to show you how to create an 8 by 8 page from a 12 by 12 page that I did from the sketchbook. Okay. Um, I've done this maybe one, at least once, maybe twice before. I'm not sh quite sure, but I do have people asking me on a fairly regular basis to show more about how to create eight by eight pages because they don't have ideas. And I don't think we need a lot of new ideas to create eight by eight pages. We just need to know a strategy on how to do it. So I'm going to show you. Let's get down to my workspace here and we'll begin. Okay, so if you were fortunate enough to get this during um, Creative Memories birthday, um, birthday week celebration, this is the new sketchbook. It's 101 scrapbooking ideas and sketches. Now this one's a little different because it actually puts the measurements in. However, I have found that the measurements are, are good for a 12 by 12 page, but how do I make an eight by eight page from the measurements for a 12 by 12 page? So I'm gonna show you. All right, so I'm gonna be creating the sketch that's on page 39 in the book, all right? So here is the sketch and it has the measurements. All right, so now I'm going to go, hold on a sec, let me show you what I already created. Let me lift this up, <laughs> ta-da! So since Halloween is just around the corner in just a couple of days, I decided to use Full Moon Fun, one of our Halloween collections, and have a really fun layout and can I tell you, very easy, quick, and simple to create. But then I decided, how do I make an eight by eight page out of this? So underneath, <laughs> here's my eight by eight version, all right? So they look pretty much identical, except for the embellishments. I did have to use different ones because I ran out, but that's okay, all right? but it still gives that same look and feel that you got from the 12 by 12. All right, so I'm gonna put these over here for now because this is the layout we're gonna create, but now I'm gonna create it with the Polar Lights collection. And I decided to use Polar Lights because it's on sale still. The sale on Polar Lights ends on October 30th, which is tomorrow. And the bundle is $39, regularly $50. So you're getting a pretty good deal on that. And it's on the paper, the embellishments, the variety map packs, the stickers, the whole kit and caboodle. All right. So I figured I would use that paper to create the same layout. So I'm going to do a 12 by 12 page, and then I'm going to do an 8 by 8. All right. So for... The 12 by 12 page, if you look at the sketch, I really don't have to worry too much because it tells me everything I need to do in terms of measurements. Now, I don't tend to always use the same size photos that they give me here because my photos might be a little different or just might strike me differently. And as you can see here on the 12 by 12 page, I didn't do the same photos. So these are just two four by six photos and I think it's gonna make a great little page. So I'm happy with that. All right, so you can put whatever you want on your pages. You don't have to do the exact mats. However, I do think it's great that they give you the sizes so you know what they were looking for or going for in the sketch. I'm just gonna hold that up closer so you can get a view of it. All right, now, if you didn't get this book, I do have a few extras in my inventory. Um, so you can contact me and let me know if you would like one, but I just have a few. All right, and then what we're gonna do here 
For the eight by eight page, I am gonna use the plus sign design. So I'm gonna go ahead and make the plus sign now. So this is my photocopy that if you've seen any of my plus sign designs, you know I always photocopy from the book. And then I'm just gonna make my markings, um, kind of center them as much as possible. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect because we're just trying to get a ballpark. But what's cool is we can look at the measurements here and kind of figure it out. But I find if you're somebody who gets maybe a little confused, it doesn't hurt to have these markings down to help you figure it out. So I'm gonna go ahead and make my plus sign. All right, so that's getting me in the ballpark. So if you remember when we were creating a 12 by 12 page, when we break up the page into our quadrants, our four quadrants, the quadrants are usually six inch squares. But because we're breaking this down for an eight by eight page, our quadrants are now gonna be four inch squares. All right, so you're gonna have quadrant one, two, three, and four, and they're all four inch squares. Now, for the 12 by 12 page, we did th uh, four three by three inch squares. So this square and this square equals six inches because they're three inches each, and the same thing over here. Six and six equals 12. So for the eight by eight, we're just simply gonna make two inch squares. So two and two will be four, two and two will be four, and four and four will be eight, and there's our eight inch square. It's that simple. Um, all right, so let's get to some cutting here. And I have a couple of different pieces here. I may not have enough. I might have to bring out some more, but that's okay. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just make sure I cut so they're all at three inches. Now this is for the um, 12 by 12 page that I'm creating right now. And then we'll go back to the eight by eight page. But it's gonna be the same concept for both. So right now I'm just focusing on making three inch wide strips. And most of this is from the basic designer pack from Fuller Lights. However, there may be a couple pieces or one piece that's from the Shades of Polar Lights collection. And, um, hold on one second. I don't think that is still available on the website, but I think I do have one or two packs of that left as well. But most of the sheets that I'm using here are part of the pack that's still available on the website um, for the sale price. So now I'm gonna go ahead and make these squares. So they're four three inch squares. And now because I have this all together, I might as well make my squares, excuse me, for my um, eight by eight page also. So I'm gonna go ahead and now make two strips. And I think I may just make it. I love it when I can use up my scraps. <laughs> All right, so that's two inches. So 
So earlier today, I went to visit our niece and her husband and their two-year-old little girl, our great niece. And we went for breakfast and then we took her to a children's museum and she had a lot of energy. It was so fun. <laughs> It's hard keeping up with a two-year-old, I'll tell you that. When your kids are, you know, grown in their 20s, 30s, whatever, you kind of forget what it's like to run after a two-year-old. <laughs> they always say there's a reason why you have them young, right? <laughs> All right. So anyway. We are almost done with all of our squares. All right, so now we have our squares for our 12 by 12 page, and there are four of them. And then we have our squares for our eight by eight page. So I'm gonna put all these scraps to the side just to get them out of the way. And I'm gonna take my pencil and zero centering ruler and get those out of the way as well. And now I'm going to go to whatever I'm going to use for my base page. Now I want to show you a couple of different things that I did here, just so you can get an idea. Now on the 12 by 12 page, what I ended up doing was using one of the title sheets as my base page. Now, what I noticed on the sketch is it didn't tell you how big this area is here. And that's a really big area of the page, right? Look how big that space is. But if I'm doing three inch squares up here and it's a 12 by 12 page, I know I have nine inches of paper down here. So anyway, what I ended up doing was cutting this dotted paper and using that for my nine inch piece. But then with my eight by eight, I got a little smarter. <laughs> well, actually, I guess it wasn't smarter. I just didn't know what sheet I wanted to use for this base piece. So I decided I'll put it on the title, the free paper, and then figure out what I want to do as a decorative thing after. However, with my eight by eight piece, I just cut an eight by eight inch square of this paper and built everything on it. So I didn't even have to do any more cutting after that. And that's what I'm gonna do this time for the eight by eight and the 12 by 12. I'm gonna go ahead and make an eight by eight square from this dotted paper. Now I think this paper is from the Shades of Pack. Um, I have to say, I loved both of these Polar Light packs. And of course, for those of you who've been watching me for a while or who know me personally, you just know the blues, the greens, they're my thing. <laughs> All right, so now here's the base piece for my eight by eight page. And I have the base piece over here for my 12 by 12 page. Now, another thing I wanna point out, on this 12 by 12 page, if you look at my trimmed piece here, at the bottom, I actually did cut a piece of this green to put underneath the, the yellow, um, border that I made from my border maker system. And I think it kind of gave it a little more um, dimension. Whereas on the top one, I didn't do it. And when I look at it now, I'm like, oh, I wish I had put that green underneath that because I think it would just stand out a little better. So I did on the eight by eight page, put that green up here and at the bottom as well. And just looking at the difference, I don't know, the Having that green underneath, it just seems a little more polished and a little more together. I really loved it. 
So it's up to you. You could do it either way. And if you look at the sketch, the sketch kind of pretty much lets you think that there are two borders at the top. And it does kind of give that appearance of two borders down the bottom. But I don't always go fully by the sketches, but I do like that idea on this one. So now I'm going to make um, my little, where's my, oh, I have one more piece of paper that I have here. Oh, and it's right here. So I think I was going back and forth between these two. And looking at the colors, I think I'm going to go with the stripey one. I kind of think that'll work nicely. So I'm going to go ahead and make, um, let's see. I'm going to punch. No, I'm going to do a half inch strip here. So there's one. There's two. Just trying to make sure I'm keeping it straight. Three and one more. And there's four. All right. All right. So that I believe is everything I need for um our pages. So let me get my tape runner. Two of these strips are going to go on the 12 by 12 page and two will go on the eight by eight. So before you do any tacking down, I would just kind of look to see where you want everything to go. And that looks pretty good to me. And then I can take this little border here. Oh, and doesn't that just tie it all together nicely, right? Oh, but then I forgot I have to punch. That's right. So if I do this, so maybe I will take, let's see how we like this. I feel like that won't jump out at us. Let me look and see what else I have here for papers. Just going through my stash here. So give me one sec. Let's see. I wonder if a darker color would make sense. Where is oh, okay. I don't know if I would do that with it. Let's keep looking. Well, that could make a nice little border. Let's try that. Okay. So I'm going to put this over to the side. And I'm going to put this football sheet into the paper guide. Now I am using, and I used it on the other two uh, layouts as well. This is the double Rick Rack BMC. Um, this is one of my favorite ones because it really will work with just about any theme that you have for a page. And it just looks so pretty. And I feel like it just ties everything together. And what's cool is you punch it once and you get two words. <laughs> so 
let's see. Yeah, I like that. That looks good. And I'm going to punch one more time for my eight by eight page. So let me just get these out of here. So this is kind of cool too, because you can get all of your cutting and punching done at the same time if you've figured out your measurements. And then it makes creating go a lot quicker because then you'll just go and tack everything down. Um, and I love that. Oh, and the back side of this looks cool too. I don't know, I'll have to play with this. This is so hard, so much to do. All right, oops, I'm gonna go this way. Straight. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and punch again. With the double rick rack, it's really important that you go slowly with the punching so you don't um, pull one of them out by mistake and tear it. It is a little more delicate. All right, so here are my borders for that. So now I can take all of this and get it out of the way. Ooh, get a little scrap there too. All right. I'm going to put this to the side. And now we can start tacking things down. All right. So I'm going to start with my squares. Well, let me just move all this out of the way, too. I say it all the time. There is never enough room <laughs> when you scrapbook, right? So I'm just going to bring this down closer to me. What I love, well, I mean, I guess it's true of most, if not all of the Creative Memories collections. Everything coordinates so nicely. And it does make things so much easier. So I'm just putting them right up against each other. So the first square went uh, flush against the left-hand side of the page. So you don't need to overlap them. They'll fit right next to each other pretty nicely. And there's the top. Now I can go ahead put my bottom border on. And my top one. And with the top one, I think, I think I went just below. I didn't overlap. I was going to overlap, and for some reason, I decided not to. And I think it looks good. Look at that. So now, I guess my decision comes from, do I want to use this side that's got a little bit of white on it to kind of Let's see how that looks. We could do that. And we could do that here. Or, I don't know, I'm kind of liking that. Let's see, the other option is to turn it over. Oh, I like them both. Struggle is real. <laughs> All right. I think, let me just move this stuff over here for a sec. I need my mask. I think I'm going to go with it like this. Oops. And 
And just be careful when you're putting the tape runner on this piece because it is a little bit delicate and you don't want to rip it. And I'm just trying to put it on so um, you don't see the base paper where the little loopies come into play, if that makes sense. <laughs> Oops. So let me hold this up and I'll show you what I mean. See how you can just make out a little of the base paper under there. So I'm just pulling it down a little bit. Put it up again so you can see. And now you cannot see the base paper underneath, okay? And then we're gonna just go ahead and do the same thing with the top border. Stand up so I can see this one. <laughs> All right, so there's that one. And then let's see, I think we could make mats from that. So I'm going to make two four by six mats. I'm just gonna straighten this edge out a little bit, just because Sometimes after you use your border punch, you have to make um, your edges straight depending on how it punched out. So I try not to use up too much paper when I do that. Put the arm out. Put at the six inch mark. All right, and then let me just quickly look to see. I think these might be four by three, but let me measure. And I'll make those mats too while I'm at. Let's see. That's three. I think it's actually two and three quarters. I'm going to make it a three. We'll see how that goes. A four by three. So we'll cut another four inch strip. And this is great because now you're using a paper. Hold on. Turn it sideways. And we'll just cut that. The three inch mark. All right, so now we have our two photos for our eight by eight, or mats rather. So now I just did my photos a little bit askew. So I will do the same thing here. And I have found that when you have your photos in that perfect position and you don't want to lose them, just pull them up a little bit, your photos or your mats, and just put the tape runner underneath where they are. And then you can go back and get your corners if you need them, they're sticking up. I think that makes it a lot easier. Just ran out of tape runner on that one, but I did reload this one. All right, so here is our 12 by 12 page. I'm gonna put that over here to the side and bring over our eight by eight page. 
So here are our mats and our borders. So we're going to start with our squares. And I'm just going to do the same order that I did on my 12 by 12 page. All right, so we'll go ahead and put these down. We're almost done. And we're getting a 12 by 12 page and an eight by eight page done. And then if you wanted these to be two page spreads, you would just double the ingredients for each page. All right. And then we're gonna do our borders. I put too much tape runner on this one. I didn't need to put as much on because I forgot I have to trim it. So just know you only have to, you know, go about eight inches on your tape runner because you're just gonna trim that border when all is said and done. Oops, do it here. Here's our bottom one. I get that in the corner. Right, and then There. We are just about done. I'm going to trim these little borders. So Please put something in the comments if you like the idea of knowing, getting ideas rather on how to create eight by eight pages. I think they make great little theme books. You know, maybe you just wanted a quick little vacation album. I mean, they make a great gift and we're getting into gift giving season, right? People love homemade um, crafty things versus, you know, buying some crazy stuff in the store that, you know, they may or may not use. Who knows? And I'm just flipping this over and trimming off the excess. Here's my cute little eight by eight page. But people, I think, really love gifts from the heart. I think that makes a different, a difference. All right. Here's my eight by eight. Aren't these just so cute? <laughs> I love it. And then, you know, your embellishments, you can really do whatever you want to do with them. So let's see what we have here. Oh, we've got some pretty little trees and some titles. So let's see. What did we do? So here's our full moon eight by eight and there's my 12 by 12 it's going to be hard to get both these 12 by 12s in but we'll try 
of that. All right, so let's put something really nice um, under. I don't think that's going to pop out enough. So let's do. Dark nights and twinkling lights. All right, and then over here. That'll look good there. And then we just have some little snowflakes. So cute. And let's see. I think a little polar bear down here would look adorable. And we just need a little something there. So how about a snowflake? There we go. So here, the snowflake doesn't show up too much on camera, but it does show up when you're right with it. It looks really cute. So we have our little embellishment triangle here, and it's an adorable little page. And then over here, let me finish this one up. Let's get, you can go a little bigger on this, I think. Uh, let's see. I feel like we could do some hot chocolates. We do it that way. That looks cute. And let's see. I think we need. Um, little animals. Oh, I'm going to take this one because he's looking in a different direction. I might pop him out on phone snaps. Mm -hmm. I'm just having fun here. <laughs> and that really is what it's all about. Fun preserving our memories. Let me put him on the top, like so. There we go. We got three little friends together there. And now we have our, I'm just going to rearrange him a little bit because I do want to be able to see that little, there. And I think we need chills and thrills. That's perfect. And on the way. We'll put it over here. All right. So here's our 12 by 12 and our 8 by 8. The embellishments are different on each, but the rest of the page is the same. So it is doable. <laughs> and I think it's kind of cool to create 8 by 8 while you're creating 12 by 12. Cut everything at once 
and put it all together. And then you're getting double the work done, right? And then you'll have an eight by eight album ready to put photos on and give as a gift to somebody. What a great thing. So you get your stuff done and you get a gift done. Can't beat that, right? <laughs> All right. So my eight by eight album is starting to look good. <laughs> All right. Let me get back up to me. I know this was a little bit of a long one, but I felt like this would be a great thing to check out. So I hope you all enjoyed it. Please put something in the comments. Let me know what you thought. Hope you like my layouts. And again, that book, the measurements are in it. So it'll be super easy to at least do your 12 by 12s. And then you can use the plus sign design to figure out what the eight by eight sizes will be. All right. So if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me at Fitzy's Fabulous Scrapbooks at gmail.com. Or you can message me on Facebook Messenger as well, okay? And you are welcome to join our Facebook group, which is FRQ Glitz Girls. I run it with uh, two of my uh, teammates, my downlines, and we have a great group there. We try to alert people of launches and new products and products that are going on sale and techniques and all kinds of fun stuff. So please feel free to join us over there. We only ask that you answer the uh, questions and agree to the rules. Um, so that way we know you're not trying to scam us. <laughs> All right. Um, and as always, if you don't have an advisor, I would love to be yours, whether you want to be a client or you want to be one of my team members. I've been getting a lot of people jumping on board to be an advisor with me on my team. Um, I'm training and we're having a lot of fun with it. So feel free. And if you're not sure what it's all about, feel free to contact me. I'd be happy to answer questions. I am a no pressure kind of person. <laughs> so I'm a pretty easy one. <laughs> all right. So anyway, I just want to make sure. Oh, and if you like this video, I would appreciate it if you would hit that like button. And if you're not already a subscriber, I would love for you to subscribe to my channel. Um, I hope you will do so. All right. I think that's all I've got for tonight. I hope everybody has a great week. Happy Halloween. And I'll see you next Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern Oh, it might be standard time now. I'm not sure when we change our clocks. Well, we'll find out. <laughs> all right. Thank you all for watching and bye for now. <laughs>